Hey guys, what is up? Yep, it's that time again. Another winter PM item so that you can get your RV martinized. You like that? Martinized. In today's classroom segment, we're going to be covering how I do my biannual proper flushing, my cleaning, and maintenance items to my six gallon Atwood water heater. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. These Atwood water heaters are made of aluminum. Since they have an aluminum clad casing, they act as their own anode. They're not like a suburban water heater where you have an additional anode rod. The Atwood water heater is its own anode rod. So it requires a biannual flushing with vinegar to remove all the mineral deposits and everything that builds up as you're traveling it accumulates inside the water heater and it needs to be flushed out now as i've mentioned in other of my videos you've heard me say it many many times uh, how important a, so a water softener is and we have a water softener so if you're a full timer and you are traveling all year round and you have an atwood and a water softener twice a year of flushing this out and doing your maintenance is fine if you do not have a water softener, you need to do it more often because otherwise these mineral deposits that comes from hard water is not only going to accumulate inside your water heater, but throughout the RV. If we do not do this flushing with the vinegar and other things that we're going to do, it's going to greatly reduce the lifespan of the water heater and the heating element. This is a very important PM item. Which brings me to the two most common uh, reasons why water heaters fail. One, is poorly wired or corroded wire connections and two it hasn't been flushed properly or often enough mineral deposits build up all inside there and on the on the heating element and it's going to cause over time the water heater to fail so today we're going to cover both of those things and more one last thing those of you who follow our channel you know i've done this water heater video before and <laughs> the other day i was watching it and uh, man, when I got through, I just went, Joni, oh God, that thing was terrible. And that was about two years ago. And I was still learning how to be on camera. And of course, uh, I was doing all the camera work and everything myself. But thanks to Joni, who has stepped up to the plate and is now my sole camera person, it frees my hands. And now I can really focus on what we're going to do here. And besides that last video, I left out some pretty important things. So this one here is going to be much more in depth and a whole lot of better camera work. Let's give a big hand to Joni. Come on. As you can see right off the bat, I have a bug screen over my access door. If you do not have a bug screen over this area, you need to get one. Because if you don't, you'll get wasps and bees and mud daubers and all kinds of little insects and critters. They'll crawl up in there and then they get into your burner and all inside this area here. You don't want to do that. You need to have a bug screen on here. And while you're at it, put it on your furnace and your refrigerator vents too. Bug screens are really important to have. Also, remember when I did that rust video a couple, three months ago and I redid this door because I had rust accumulating here? Look at that, it's really holding up well. This, this water heater is nine years old, going on 10. You know, just taking care of it uh, twice a year, it'll really stay, it'll stay looking good and it'll work top notch. I got a real treat for you guys this time. I've got an endoscope. We're gonna be using this and taking a look inside the water heater and show exactly what's going on in there. This is a really cool tool. So that's pretty much it, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start cleaning all these electrical connections and I'm going to be going over the three different safety features that this water heater has. You'll notice that I have my safety glasses on, my textured rubber gloves, and I've turned the power off to the water heater. And I've also turned off the water, the main water valve, I've turned it off. So let's start cleaning all the electrical connections. So what we're going to do here is you have one, two, three, four, five wire connections here and up here you have your ground 
And as I was preparing for this video, just look at what's happened just in the last six months. I mean, these, you know, we take our RVs outside and the only thing that's protecting this water heater from the elements is closing the door. So you get all this moisture and stuff in here and you can see how that's just now starting to kind of oxidize a little bit. So we're going to clean this with ground wire too. What we're going to do, these things, these connections right here, they're kind of a, I don't know how to say it, but they're a little flimsy. What I like to do is just kind of hold something there. I'm using my socket and my screwdriver here. You could use a regular screwdriver and just hold that, but I like this in because it's kind of round and blunt and it won't puncture that foam rubber there. So we're just going to take this first connection and we're going to pull it off. As I showed you before when I did my generator uh, three-part series, we're going to do the same kind of cleaning to these electrical connections as we did there, only in here it's a little bit tighter. This is why I'm wearing safety glasses. We're going to take my brake cleaner and we're just going to squirt a little cleaner inside there. Then we're going to take my toothbrush, an old toothbrush, and we're just going to get inside that connection. We're going to spray in there again. And then on this little spade here, this is a spade connector, that's what these are called. On that one there, you can do one of two things. You can either take some 4 aught steel wool, for those of you who don't know what that is, one zero steel wool is single aught, two zeros is double aught, triple aught, four zeros is four aught steel wool. So you can get in there and clean it this way. This is kind of difficult. I take some 120 sandpaper and I'll just kind of sit here and just kind of clean the outside edge there. And, and again, if you do this every six months, it's not going to take much to get these clean. My first car was a 57 Chevy and that's in the day when you had points and plugs and condenser and all that. Remember back then when you had a little uh, matchbook and you'd open up the flap and there'd be like 20 or 30 matches in there? We used to rip off that bottom part to go in between the points. But I'm doing the same thing here. You just take a little bit of sandpaper, cleaning off the outside of that spade. And in this case here, I like to take just a little bit of dialectic grease and put it on that little spade connector. And the reason is, is that not only will it prevent corrosion, but it'll make removing that a lot easier next time. So let's just go to the next one. I'm going to hold the center of that connector right there and just kind of wiggle that off with my needle nose pliers. Same thing. I always like doing one wire at a time, uh, no matter what I'm working on. That way I don't have a whole bunch of wires that I've removed and take the risk of, okay, where'd this wire go? <laughs> so I just do one at a time. Okay, so I've already finished this one here. I wanted to come to this particular one right here. As you'll notice here, we have a short little wire right here. I'll go ahead and pull it off here so you can, I can give you a better view. This has got a fuse in it. You see that right there? This is called the thermo cutout fuse. When you're running your water heater with propane, and if this burner happens to get a blowback for whatever reason, this is the first safety feature of the Atwood water heater. This fuse here, if, that, if you got a flame blowout, it's going to hit that fuse and shut that thing off just like that. Okay, so this is the first uh, safety feature and we're going to go ahead and clean both this connector and that connector just like we did over here. And this one here is actually crimped on, it's not removable, but I'm still going to come in here and I'm going to clean it with some brake cleaner and keep that connection clean and do the same over here. And since this is not a removable spade, put a piece of paper towel underneath there, squirt some protectant in there. Like I said, you should be carrying this with you at all times. I've put some dialectic grease on that spade and connect it. This fuse needs to be in this horizontal position right over the burner. If all of a sudden this, your water heater went bad, here's the first place to check. And one last thing about this blowout fuse, this will blow out at 190 degrees. The second safety feature is the high pressure valve right here, okay? This high pressure valve is the same kind that you use in, in a home or a residential type of water heater, okay? So if this one ever goes bad, you can remove this one, take it to Home Depot and match it up and replace it. If for some reason your water heater got too hot, this safety valve right here, this high pressure valve will blow at 210 degrees and then it'll begin to reseat and repressurize at 125. This drain plug right here is a nylon drain plug. This is the third safety feature. So now I'm going to take care of this ground wire right here. And the first thing I'm going to do while it's tight is I'm going to take my brass bristle brush. You can tell I use this for so many things. I just love this tool. 
I'm going to just get some of that outside corrosion off of there. And then I'm going to take my hand tool here with my socket and I'm going to unscrew this. Whenever you have electrical problems, many of them are caused from a bad connection and especially the ground. And I'm going to go ahead and wire brush that a little bit more. Then I'm going to take some of my protectant and I'm going to spray it right on that, right like that. I'm going to take some more dialectic grease and put it on that little tab right there. So we got that tightened back up there and because just what I showed you, uh, when I noticed that outside corrosion and oxidation on there, I'm going to go ahead and just give it another shot on the outside. You just can't protect these things good enough. But I do want to show you something as I was preparing for this video. I wanted to show you the control board right here. This, this board is loose. Look at that. I looked at both of these screws. You have one here and one up here and both of them were loose. This has just happened in the last six months since I redid this the last time. It's because you know, we're going down the roads and you know how some of these roads are, right? Everything is shaking and bouncing and stuff like that. Stuff comes loose. I'm always looking for stuff like this. Always check those screws on the circuit board too. Now let's start flushing the water heater. Now, as a matter of practice, what I do, and your, your schedule may vary, but I have found what works best for Joni and I. When I know I'm going to do a water heater flushing and this maintenance, I start about one o'clock, 12, one o'clock. I mean, that's what it is now. It's quarter to one. And the reason I do it at that time is we've already had a chance to eat breakfast or eat lunch, clean up all the dishes. We've had a chance to uh, shower and all that because I'm turning this thing off and we're going to be flushing it and it's going to be off for the rest of the afternoon and tonight. And we're going to come back and revisit this thing tomorrow around noon. I'm going to let that vinegar cook in there for 24 hours. So whatever works for you is fine, but I'm just kind of giving you a little background on how I plan to do this maintenance. Okay, so we just turned off the main water valve. Now we're going to go into the coach and we're going to open up the kitchen sink on the hot water side. We want to take all that pressure off of the water heater. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out the drain plug. What we're going to use here is a 15 16 socket. It's a 12 point socket, a swivel, and about a four or five inch extension on a ratchet, okay? This set right here is half inch drive. If you have this in three eighths, that's fine. So here's why you have the swivel on here. You're able to come up underneath the propane section of the water heater. If you're one where you're like, okay guys, dads, or I'm gonna be doing the uh, water heater today, and everybody goes and does the dishes in their showers, that water in there is gonna be hot. And that's why you need to be wearing extra protection. So you would just put these gloves on to protect because when that water starts coming out, it's going to be hot and these will not be good enough. OK, so make sure that if it's hot, put on a heavier set of gloves. All right, let's continue bringing out this plug and then I guess undo it by hand. Watch what happens, folks. It's only going to come out a little bit, but watch what I do now. I'm going to take this high pressure valve, this latch right here, and I'm going to flip it up and watch how much volume comes out. See, I've relieved the pressure and now that water can really come out of there. Okay, so the water is all drained. But what I wanted to show you is in my last water heater video that I did, uh, remember I explained that I was having a leaking problem here. But later on, I got to examining it on why this is happening. And in these threads right here, where that plug goes into, I was finding white hard salts and mineral deposits built up in those threads. And so I took this tool, this one right here, I found this at a flea market, I think, but I use this a lot uh, to be able to get into really tight places and I can clean those threads. Now they're clean now, but the point I'm making is, is that if you have a nylon plug that's leaking, do not put Teflon tape around it. They self seal without tape because they're tapered. The place to look is like how what I found out is look at your threads and you'll probably find deposits in those threads. Clean those threads out before you put in a new plug. Okay, so now that the water has drained, we're gonna use an endoscope. It's a very simple tool. Uh, they have a wireless ver uh, version of this, but I like to keep things simple. I have a, my Mac laptop and it's USB. You just plug it into the USB and on a Mac, you use Photo Booth. 
you just launch photo booth. It's, it's got a camera and six lights. The camera is a two mega, a megabyte camera, plenty good for what we're doing here. And the lights are adjustable. You see this little wheel on the side? So watch, I'll plug it back in and watch the lights. You see that? They can go dim or bright. And this endoscope is a really cool tool, not only to inspect inside of a water heater where you can't get up in there and see, but it's good for the engine bay. I've used it even, uh, I guess it was about a year ago, I thought I heard something underneath the slide, like a loose screw or a bolt or something. And you know, how am I gonna get underneath there and look? Well, endoscope. I, I came onto the side of our slide inside the coach and I slipped that thing underneath the carpet and the slide itself and I was able to inspect all what was going on underneath the slide. It turned out it was a piece of plastic. Uh, it'll take pictures or video. We're going to take video. And you can see, you can bend this into shapes. This is pretty thick. Some of them are real flimsy. But what I want to do is I want to go in and over and up like this, okay? I'm going to want to bend it and then go up like that. And by the time I get that in there, it's going to get all bent out of shape. So what do you do about that problem? You can either take a regular coat hanger, a wire coat hanger, and cut it, straighten it out, put it along the wire here, and then tape it. Okay? Now you can bend that wire and it'll stay as you funnel it in there. The other way is to take some baling wire, and that's what I'm going to do today. So as you can see, I took some of my baling wire, I cut off a big strip, I wound it around the endoscope wire, and now it's going to be much stiffer and it'll, as I insert it and want to move it around, it's going to hold its shape. I've got it plugged into my laptop, I've got photo booth on, and I've got my lights adjusted to the brightest point. Okay, so now I just hit record on photo booth, and this is what we're looking at in the bottom of the water heater. Okay, so you can obviously see we have those uh, calcium deposits and salts and minerals. See them all over in there? And like I said, this is me having a softener. I've seen this really bad without a softener. So that's where this, this is the bottom and a little bit up the side. This camera is so sensitive that once you stick it in there, you have to let it, you have to stop it so it'll focus just like that. You see that? You can see those deposits up in there. And now I'm kind of moving it around and I stop it so it can focus. I'm turning it around. Let's pull it back some. Let's take a look over here on this side over here. You can see right there. You see that? I'm really close to the top there. I believe that's where I am. And you can see, <laughs> it reminds me like stalagmites in a cave or something. But you get the idea. But the whole point is I wanted to show you how those minerals actually do uh, collide together. They stick to the walls of the, of the uh, water heater and they get on the heating element too. And that's what we're gonna get rid of. Okay, so now that we've seen with our endoscope what it looks like, we're going to put the plug back in. And this is the old plug. We're not putting in a new plug. We'll put the new plug in after we flush it. So we're going to go ahead and put in the old plug. And there is no torque value on this. You just bring it snug. But I'll tell you, I was really, really happy to see what little mineral deposits were in there. And that's because we flush this twice a year and I have a water softener. I know you guys probably get tired of hearing me say that, but we just saw the proof of the pudding, right? Just snug. Now to put the vinegar in, we're gonna put it in where this high pressure valve is. We're just gonna grab our channel locks. Again, this is something that you should have at all times. And we're just gonna unscrew this. And once it's loose, unscrew it by hand. And that's what it looks like. And you can see even there how it's got some mineral deposits on that. You see that? And look here. Look inside here. You see all that in there? This is what we were looking at inside the water heater with the endoscope. So I go ahead and just kind of clean that out. So now that we have the high pressure valve out, we're going to take this tube and we're going to hold it up like this with my funnel. And we're going to pour in 
three gallons of white vinegar. Remember, this is a six gallon water heater. I like using a 50-50 mix. 50% vinegar, 50% water. But right now, it's only half full. I'll show you what we're gonna do in a minute. So I've removed the old tape using my little tool and I just get in those threads, peel off all the old Teflon tape. Then I take my roll of new Teflon tape. And for those of you who don't know, you always put it on clockwise. So you just hold it and you roll it about maybe three turns. And the reason you put it on clockwise is so that when you're putting this back in and screwing it clockwise, you're going with the tape and the tape will unravel. So we're gonna take the high pressure valve and stick it back in there. And we're gonna bring it around hand tight. And then we're gonna take our channel locks and bring it around to where it's just snug. Bring it down to where it's 90 degrees, okay? Just like that. We will not be removing this again. That's why I put on new tape. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lift this lever up and we're gonna go turn on the main water. As that water's rising, it's gonna get to this height and there it comes. We flip it off and now it'll fill up the rest of the way. And the next thing we're gonna do is now go turn on the water heater. So since we're full hookups here, I went and turned on the electrical switch to turn on the water heater. If you're boondocking, you probably will end up using your propane burner to heat up the water heater. So it's been on now for 30 minutes or so, maybe a little longer, and so it's, it's good and hot now. And we're gonna let this sit all overnight and we'll pick it back up tomorrow around noon. But one last thing I wanna do, what I like to do, remember this is hot, but I'm gonna put a cup underneath here and I'm barely gonna open up this valve. You see that? And I'm gonna get some of that vinegar water all in through that valve. The acidity of that vinegar is gonna dissolve and break down all those mineral deposits in the water heater and in here. So we'll pick this up tomorrow and we'll show you how we're gonna wrap this up. Okay guys, it's the next day. I've had the water heater on all night. So it's been 23 hours since we put that solution in there. So the power switch is off. I've turned off the main water supply. We're gonna go back into the coach and turn on the hot water uh, faucet again to just to relieve any pressure. So we're gonna release the pressure on the water heater and you can see that it's got that solution. Not to worry, when we're all done here and we fill the water heater back up with water, we'll flush all this out too. Okay, so we've turned off the main water, we've turned off the switch, released the pressure on the hot water side in the kitchen, and now we're gonna put on our hot rubber gloves here, these heavy duty gloves because remember, this has been cooking all night long. When I remove this drain plug, this water's gonna be hot. Take this big bad boy here, and let's begin to remove the drain plug. I will flip this up after I get the plug out. And there's the plug. And now I'm gonna flip the switch, and it'll drain faster. Okay, so we just got through draining out the water and the vinegar uh, through the drain plug. The next logical step is that you take a, a rinsing wand, put it on the hose, and then you insert the wand up inside and you begin to flush out all the remaining debris all inside the water heater. The problem with just using this one wand is that you can see it straight. Well, look at where we're going in. The drain plug's over here. This whole cavity here is the water heater and it's very, hard, if not impossible, to get this wand way over here so I can really rinse well up into here. So what I do is I use two wands, and I'm going to show you what we do with this second wand. After we rinse it all off, we're going to put the endoscope back in and take a look at what it looks like now after it's cooked all night long. So what I'm going to do is I put on my heavier duty gloves right over my rubber gloves, and I'm going to just gently heat this plastic and form this over into a 90. And just kind of gently just heat that up and bend it over. And then once I've got that shape, I'm gonna put it right in the water and quench it so it won't lose its shape. So before we begin to put the wand inside there and begin to rinse it, like I said, this thing has been hot all night long. I've got the plug removed. So I like, for a practice of mine, I like letting the water heater cool for about 15 or 20 minutes with the plug off, just so I don't go putting in cold water 
and taking a risk of possibly cracking the inside of the water here. So we're just gonna let it sit here and cool for a few minutes. Okay, so we turned the water on. You can see it coming out here. And now we're gonna put in our wand and we've got the switch right here, the on and off lever. And now we're gonna start just going in and out like this. And I'm just taking this wand and I'm turning it and going back and forth. But what we're trying to do is really get all that residue and those deposits that have been dissolved out of here. Look at this. You see this here? Look at all that. This is what we're getting out of there. You see all those deposits there? Now we're going to use my curved one so I can get more over in here and push that through and get it over there. Turn the water on and continue just to turn that and that's doing a really good job. Show them here, Joni. Look at all that. You see all that? This is what we're after right here. And like I said, you want to do this for about four or five minutes, somewhere in there, until you stop seeing uh, deposits coming out. And that's pretty much it. So I just turned the main water off. I'm going to let this continue to drain, but I wanted to show you one more time here. Look at that. This is all what we are washing away. This is why it's so important to do this twice a year especially when you're full timing and when you have a water softener. If you didn't have a water softener like we did, this would be probably three to four times worse than what you see here. Look when you raise the door, you see all those, <laughs> how the minerals actually went through this little burner cover here and it got caught in the bug screen. But that's just a small portion of what came out of there. Okay. Now let's take the endoscope, put it in there, and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so here we go. And we're looking up inside here. There's the side and the top. You can see there's just a couple little pieces up there. And go back towards the back. Come back away so we can focus. You see, look at how nice and clean that is now. You can see where the deposits used to be but they're gone. It's left a little mark, but it looks really, really good. Let me bend this to the right a little bit and let's take a look at the right side of the water heater. So we'll get it back over in here. The scaling is gone. Now there's one little piece right there. But that baby looks really clean. Like I said, this water heater is um, it's going on 10 years old. That is not bad. Not bad at all. The next step is, is we're going to put in a new plug. These come uh, two to a pack. These are in my Amazon store. And this has the built-in safety feature. Remember, it's got the hollowness inside there. It also does not need Teflon tape. So we're just going to go ahead and put this in here. And put our socket on here and tighten it up. This is why... I reuse the old plug. When we filled it with uh, vinegar and water, I reuse the old plug just to cook it for overnight. But now I'm putting in a new plug because this one's going to be in here for six months. And like I said, there's no torque here. We just want to snug it up. You see that? Those threads are tapered. It's nice and tight. It will not leak. Okay, so the plug is in. I've still got the latch up on the high pressure switch. Now I'm going to go turn on the water, the main water supply, and let the water heater begin to fill up with water. Okay, the water's starting to come out. We're going to flip the switch down. And now the water will continue to rise to the top of the water heater. So I want to talk to you for just a minute about maintaining an air pocket in the top of the water heater. This water heater by design is to maintain an air pocket of air up on the top part of the water heater. Water can't be compressed, but when it gets hot, it expands. Now, sometimes you may see your high pressure switch here weeping a little bit. It may be dripping water. That does not mean that this is bad or has failed. If you wanna fix that very quickly, you just go into any RV faucet that you have, turn on the hot side, that'll take off the pressure and that will stop the weeping. But if you suspect that you have lost your air pocket up on top or you'd like to check it, I'm going to put the steps of how to 
reestablish the air pocket at the top of the water heater down in the description text. I don't want to take all the time to explain that here now because this video has gone on long enough. But, but by having it in the description text, you'll be able to copy and paste that into a document or print it out or whatever, and you can refer to it later. As you can see, guys, this was not a big deal. But I do want to make this point. As I said, I do this twice a year, and we're traveling all over the place. So our water source changes from state to state to state. Now, depending on where you are, you may not have hard water. And you may find that your personality of your coach now it requires it once a year. Maybe it would require it three times a year or every other month. I mean, it just depends on what kind of water you're getting and how well you're taking care of it. And do you have a water softener? So you're just going to have to kind of see what works for you. But for me, we do it twice a year. Don't forget, if you like this stuff, if you like learning how to fix stuff, clean stuff, maintain stuff and all that, I highly encourage you to go to my playlist right up here and I have got a ton of videos just like this on how to take care of a multitude of things. Because you guys can do this. It's not like I have some special skill set. <laughs> I, I, I show you exactly how to do it. You probably or should have already have the tools and you just go and you do these projects. And that way you don't have to pay a mobile tech $125 an hour to come out and do it or take it to the dealer and let it sit there on the lot for three weeks until they get around to it. You guys can do this. So if you do like this stuff and you want to see more, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell off to the right so you'll be notified the next time I upload my next video. Now I know I did not cover the maintenance of the burner side up here on the propane side. That would have made this video just even longer. I probably will do a separate video on how to take care of this. But whether you use propane or electric, you still have to flush this, okay? If you're interested in getting a water softener or any of the other water supplies that I use all the time, I have an awesome relationship with a vendor that I'll put the link down below in the description text to where you can go get that and look at all the stuff that's available there. I'll give you all the information there that you need. And everything else I've got is also in our Amazon store. All the other things, my tools, my Indoscope, uh, all those type of things. I mean, it's great when you guys use our uh, Amazon store to buy any gear that you need. So the link to that store will be down there too. So this is the conclusion of how to properly flush, clean, and maintain your RV Atwood water heater. Now get to work and get that water heater martinized. So until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around.